If you're from out of town, the word city liquidators might conjure visions of strange saucer men annihilating entire towns with outer space weaponry. But in Portland, city liquidators signify something altogether different, though not necessarily less bizarre. The atmosphere in the city liquidator store at 3rd and Southeast Belmont is about what you would expect if the Howard Hughes estate held a garage sale. Have you ever wanted to buy something like, oh, say, some huge neon illuminated letters from an S.H. Crest sign, but didn't know where to find them? Or if the traffic lights always seem to be going against you, maybe you'd like to buy your own. I used to have a ninth grade teacher who liked to hide in the closet and listen to what the class was saying about her. I bet she'd like one of these. Or how about a chair for a cut-rate barber or a painless dentist who's just going into practice? Well, for any of these items, your best bet is probably city liquidators. City liquidators will buy and sell just about anything that comes their way. They pick up most of the stuff in ridiculous quantities at desperation prices from bankrupt businesses, state and federal surplus, factory overstocks, and individuals who just want to get rid of something. Then they mark it up and sell it to other businesses and the public at rates well below wholesale. The idea is to turn over as much merchandise as possible in the shortest imaginable time. If you have a lot of traffic in your store and you have a very cheap price, people look at that and say, my God, i got to have one. And they'll buy anything? If the price is right. Genial Walt Pellet is the dynamo who keeps the wheels spinning at City Liquidators. He combines a tycoon's lust for wheeling and dealing with the smooth patter and enthusiasm of a TV game show host. And he loves to boast about its most outrageous merchandising coups. The most amazing item is 46,000 wigs and 5,700 toupees. And I think... Uh, that was amazing. The way Walt talks about it, you'd think the liquidation business was a breeze, the kind of enterprise that might almost run itself. But Walt's not above a bit of promotion. And this is our Louis Liquidator color book, which just came off the presses uh, Friday. And of course, it's got a picture of Louis Liquidator on all 16 pages. And uh, we give this away free to little kids. And I want to give you your memorial uh, copy right now. This ha is Happiness is a fast buck. We're one of the few that admit it. <laughs> Running city liquidators also requires a dedicated sales staff, working the phones and stopping customers in the aisles. Walt is unstinting when it comes to praising his salesmen and women. Okay, well, we have two classes of salesmen. One of them is our retired millionaires club. And these are guys that are about 60 years old, younger or older, in that area. And they've been, some of them in business. One of them owns a couple of A&W root beer stores. And uh, they work mostly for the fun of it. Then we have our uh, Wonder Women. We used to have a department store, not a department store, a clothing store downtown. And uh, my daughters all ran that thing at one time or another. And one day I said, why are they wasting their time down there on 4th Avenue when they can come down here instead of, you know, the total store selling 500 a day, these girls can sell two, 3,000 each. Walt's absolutely right. It takes a special breed of salesmen to move hundreds of thousands of binders. This is probably the largest, the biggest item that we've ever bought. A large national company had 865,000 assorted three ring binders for sale. And 865,000? Eight in six national warehouses around the country. How could you ever hope to get rid of that number of, I mean, if, the, if this company couldn't get rid of them, how can you do it? Well, we have salesmen. Unlike other captains of industry who supervise their empires from wood paneled offices, Walt Pellet never hesitates to put himself into the day to day fray on the sales floor. Yeah. Watching Walt, in fact, may be the most fun you can have at City Liquidators. Now listen, how many of those are you buying today? How many? Yeah. I don't know. Because we got a, we, one is definitely not enough. How many kids you got at home? Two daughters. You got two daughters? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, okay. Well, I get at least three each because they're going to fight over the colors. <laughs> Green right? one, orange one. Yeah, but especially this kind. No, yeah. Oh, get that one right there. Right yeah. There. Mm -hmm. See, because when you come in after skiing, see that? Mm -hmm. Your hair won't be a mess anymore. It'll be lovely. Oh, look at this one. And they're only That's a buck. One dollar. Right here, we have a live one. Write him up. Oh, no, you don't want to put it down there, do you? Sure, I don't care. Somebody else will buy it. All right, that's 19 bucks, okay? Appreciate it. See, it's first time customer. Now, how can I you pay for what? this? Can I pay for this with master charge? You can pay cash, check, or hostages. But if you have cash, we've got to have a very good ID. Okay. When 
The story came back. He said he got a great buy on some binders, and he's been running around the station all week with them. Yeah, you got to me. Look at this. And I'll bet he made a profit, too. Five bucks seem like too much. <laughs> <laughs> he threw in a piece of paper. <laughs> well, Ron is gloating over his investment. Here's a look at what's coming up next on Faces and Places.